गुड इवनिंग मोहन ओके सो आई गेस एवरी वन रिवाइज द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी स्टडीड इन लास्ट क्लास टेल मी गुड इवनिंग रेमनिका गुड इवनिंग जैन गुड इवनिंग राइट येस वेरी गुड सो आई गेस ऑल ऑफ यू नाउ अंडरस्टूड अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज रिफ्रैक्शन टेल मी येस ऑल ऑफ यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज रिफ्रैक्शन राइट एवरी वन दीपांशु चिन्मयी रोशनी पीयूष मौर्य yes because in last class we studied about refraction only okay so i'll revise what we have studied in last class okay so when we talk about refraction we studied that refraction is a phenomena okay so re refraction is a phenomena when light passes through one medium to another medium right so i can say that the bending of light when light passes from one medium to other medium okay is called as refraction okay then we studied about what is denser medium what is rarer medium what is optical density right what are the laws of refraction what is refractive index hai na ye sab padha tha humne right okay now apart from that we studied about lateral shift hai na so ye padha tha ki when object okay when multiple objects are kept okay multiple objects are kept wait everyone someone is asking link okay ha huh. so in last class we studied that if we keep one slab or two slab or three slabs having different refractive index okay so we don't have to worry about all the surfaces we just have to use snell's law at the topmost surface and the bottom surface yes or no tell me guys yes or no we have proved it right in last class we have proved it how yes how the refractive index of all the other surfaces will be cancelled right yes very good and we also studied that angle of incidence okay the angle of incidence of the first medium right for the first surface is equal to angle of refraction for the last surface we have proved it right we have proved it okay the only thing that will change okay the only thing that will change is the shift in shift in incident ray and emergent ray this blue one is your emergent ray and this golden one is your incident ray right and this shift is called as lateral shift theek hai right then the second concept we studied is about apparent height and real height i hope all of you remember this concept yes tell me okay very good everyone okay so we studied these things we studied what is refractive index how refractive index is associated right what happens when light light passes perpendicular to through a glass slab right if light passes perpendicularly i can say that angle of incidence is zero right if angle of incidence is zero then angle of refraction will also be zero which means it will just pass through the glass slab without any deviation hai na got it okay then we studied what are the factors on which refractive index of medium depends so we studied that it also depends on medium sorry material of the medium density of the medium and color of wavelength right so the formula that we studied was refractive index is speed of light in medium 1 with respect to speed of light in medium 2 now tell me this is relative refractive index or absolute refractive index this is the formula of relative refractive index or absolute refractive index relative right very good morya very good priyanshu okay when we talk about absolute it is speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in medium okay now whenever you get confused because sometimes you might get confused that 
स्पीड ऑफ लाइट इन वैक्यूम ऊपर होगा कि नीचे होगा सो ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर एब्सोल्यूट रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स विल ऑलवेज बी ग्रेटर देन वन एब्सोल्यूट रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स राइट एब्सोल्यूट रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स इज ऑलवेज ग्रेटर देन वन बट कैन आई से दैट रिलेटिव रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स विल बी ग्रेटर देन वन ऑलवेज कैन आई से दैट कि रिलेटिव रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स इज ऑलवेज ग्रेटर देन वन नो यस वेरी गुड राइट I cannot say that refractive index, relative refractive index, is always greater than one. It may be or may not be, but absolute will always be greater than one. ठीक है? Very good, everyone. Very good. Okay. So this is something that we have already studied. Okay. Now, when we talk about when you talk about the application think about it when you talk about the application what is the application tell me if you talk about the concepts so i can say that i can say that the first concept okay which we will study with refraction okay is something called as total internal refraction or total internal reflection sorry total internal reflection yes or no tell me yes or no tell me guys yes okay now before studying that before studying that i hope all of you can solve problem like this i hope all of you can solve problem like this yes or no question number 9 formula putting getting yes very good what about question number 10 can you solve question number 10 tell me just go through it once go through it once Then we have a question number ten. A laser beam is directed at an angle theta, at an angle theta, to the normal of one side of a rectangular block, to fused quartz. Okay, part of the light striking the side of the block passes into the block and strikes the adjacent face. To so what angle theta will the laser beam be totally reflected in the block? Now, don't you think? right if you don't if you don't even know the concept okay if you don't even know the concept forget about the concept right can i say that can i say that okay i'm trying to understand the concept over here this is your slab i'll say that this is your slab okay suppose this is a slab and laser beam is directed at at an angle theta to the normal of one side of a rectangular block okay right okay two fused quartz now think about it think about it this light is tell me the light is directed to a fused quartz okay and part of light striking the side of the block passes into the block and strikes on the adjacent face okay now the question is the question is for what angle theta will the laser beam be totally reflected in the block now when we talk about total reflection so can i say that okay this should be this should pass through this medium and reflect back yes or no tell me tell me yes or no yes so this is a case of this is a case of total internal ref right total internal reflection yes or no this is a case of total internal reflection think about it yes now why this will happen first of all why this will happen now think about it. suppose this is your denser medium suppose this is your denser medium 
denser medium and this is your rarer medium this is your rarer medium then light will pass through right light will pass through this okay but it will bend away from the normal so i can say that i can say that the refracted ray will be something like this yes or no the refracted ray will be something like this so if i increase if i increase the angle suppose i keep on increasing the angle so there will be a there will be an angle okay for which this refracted ray will just become like this yes or no tell me yes or no everyone yes now if you further increase the angle if you further increase the angle then obviously this will be in the same medium right this will be in same medium which is a case of reflection yes or no so suppose this angle this angle theta is that angle for which angle of refraction this angle of refraction is 90 degree okay it is 90 degree then can we use snell's law tell me can we use snell's law suppose this is mu 1 and this is mu 2 can we use snell's law tell me so let's use snell's law so what we can write we can write mu 1 sin theta is equal to mu 2 sin 90 degree right right everyone now we know that sin 90 degree is equal to what sin 90 degree is equal to 1 so can i say that sin theta is equal to mu 2 by mu 1 And this theta, what is this theta? This theta is the minimum angle, right? This is the minimum angle. Or you can say it is minimum angle for which, tell me, this light, this refracted ray, okay, will reflect. Or this is the maximum angle for which this, this ray will be refracted. Or it will not reflect okay so this angle this theta is called as critical angle so critical angle is sine inverse mu2 by mu1 got it tell me got it yes or no yes or no yes very good everyone i'm very good right so now now look at this problem. Okay, now look at this problem. So can I say that? Can I say that? We just have to find theta c. We just have to find theta c. Okay, so I cannot solve this because I have to use, I have to use the refractive index of quads. Okay, okay, refractive index from the table I have to use. Okay, that's why I didn't ask you to solve. I just asked you to understand this problem. Okay, got it, right? Got it. Very good, everyone. Yes, very good. Now, when, what do you think? What do you think? What are the cases in which there will not be, right? There will not be any refraction. Tell me, what are the cases in which there will not be any refraction, even if light passes through one medium to another medium. Tell me. It passes through a boundary of one medium to other medium. Or it just passes through a boundary. Yes, very good, through. Very good, right? So when it is perpendicular, very good. So this is a first case when it is perpendicular. Right? When light is perpendicular to the surface, it will not refract. It will just pass through. And second is when the two medium, right? If the refractive index of two medium is same. Okay. Abhishek message to host. Okay. Right. Got it. Easy. Okay. So we can solve problem like this. Tell me. We can solve problem like this. Yes or no. We can solve easy problem like this. If speed of light in air is given. Right? What will be the speed of diamond whose refractive index is 2.4? <coughs> yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? 
we know the formula refractive index is equal to speed of light in air or vacuum divided by speed of light in medium we will just use we will get the formula always remember always remember speed of light is maximum in vacuum or air as simple as that so if your answer is more than that then your answer is wrong okay right okay now second problem think about it second problem this problem so can i say that can i say that the same thing i can say about wavelength yes or no the same thing i can say about wavelength because speed is directly proportional to wavelength yes got it got it okay very good everyone now try this problem guys try this problem try this problem everyone try this problem Tell me. Maria, check your answer. Maria Vardhan, not G Maria. So velocity of light in glass is given. So this is velocity of light in medium, while velocity of light in vacuum is given. What is the absolute refractive index? See. so absolute refractive index is speed of light in medium or vacuum vacuum always vacuum think about it because mu is always greater than 1 maria your mu is less than less than 1 na right absolute refractive index is always greater than 1 yes very good so 3 into 8 power 8 divided by 2 into 10 power 8 this is formula putting getting very easy problem yes very good okay now absolute done now when it about relative i told you relative is refractive index of one medium divided by refractive index of another medium got it got it yes very good okay now i hope all of you remember this concept i have already taught you this concept what is the meaning of lateral displacement yes now think about it suppose suppose this is the thickness this is thickness given okay i am saying that this is this line this thickness of glass slab is given can you find can you find the displacement can you find the lateral shift tell me tell me can you find lateral shift yes or no how many of you know trigonometry tell me i hope everyone know trigonometry right yes abiram very good can you use trigonometry over here can you use trigonometry over here now this is obviously i'm not asking you to solve this now right this will be your homework okay try to solve right i'll give you a hint see this length is t i'll give you the answer also by the way i'll give you the answer i'll explain but try to solve at home by yourself once so this is t and this is angle r this is angle r so you can find what you can find this length ob ob you can find yes or no tell me 
Yes or no? Yes? Okay, very good. Now, in triangle OBL, in triangle OBL, this is a question of trigonometry, okay? OBL, OB you know, OB you calculated, right? Yes? And see, we know that, we know that, okay, this angle is R and this whole angle is 90 degree. This is R1, right? So you can calculate this angle, this angle or this angle and you can calculate BL, right? In terms of mu, R, mu and R, yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? You can, right? You just have to use trigonometry in two triangles, as simple as that, okay? Got it? Anyways, that is not in your syllabus, so don't worry, but you can calculate. If you are curious enough, you can calculate, okay? Now, when we talk about the concept, I proved that, okay, I proved that angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence. Yes or no? I use Snell's law, okay? I use Snell's law at the two surfaces, and I prove that angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence, which, me, which means that the incident ray and the emergent ray will always be parallel to each other, right? It will be just shifted, right? And the shift depends on what? It shift depends on thickness, right? Shift will depend on thickness, okay? It, is dep it will depend on angle of incident, okay? It depends on refractive index also as well as wavelength, obviously, right? Got it? Tell me, got it? Yes? Yes, very good. Now, if we talk about the application of refraction, okay? So one of the application that we studied in last class is your apparent height and real height. Apparent height and real height. Now see, see this example over here. Okay, so in this case, even though the object, the object is at the bottom of the liquid, at the bottom of the bucket, we see, right? It seems like it is at the much higher level, right? Or the depth of the object it doesn't seem like that much as compared to the real depth. Yes or no? So we proved this. I hope all of you remember. We proved that real depth divided by apparent depth. Wait, I'll just show you. Right? Real depth by apparent depth is equal to refractive index of the medium. Yes or no? Yes or no? I hope all of you remember. We proved it. Okay. Even though I could just, I, I told you, right? I can just say that this is the formula, but I told you how to find this and how to remember, because just think intuitively, not think intuitively, okay? If I see that the object is actually at much, tell me, much lower level, okay, it at more depth as compared to its apparent depth, then the ratio of real depth by apparent depth should be greater than one, which means it should be equal to refractive index of the medium, which medium in which the object is kept, okay? Right? Yes. And this is this is one more example in which uh, we see that the pencil, if you observe pencil, it seems like it is bent. Yes or no? Right? It seems it is bent. That is also due to refraction. Anna, got it? So these are some activities which you can do. Yes, everyone got it. <coughs> yes. So this is the formula that we derived already. Okay, this is the formula that we derived already. Real depth and apparent depth. Okay, and this is the formula of lateral shift. Okay. So when we talk about change, when we talk about change, mu is always real depth by apparent depth. 
Now, when we talk about the change, what will be the change? Tell me, change will be real depth minus apparent depth, yes or no? Right? Change, change in height. Change in height will be real depth. Okay, real depth, suppose R minus apparent depth. Minus apparent depth. Now, if we talk about apparent depth, can I say that it is real depth by mu? So, I can say that it is real depth minus real depth by mu. Apparent depth, right? So, it will be 1 minus 1 by mu. Make sense? Tell me, make sense? Yes? So, if you... Yes, very good. So, I can say that, I can say that this, this, not only give me the idea about apparent depth, but this also tells me about a very important term, which is called as optical path difference. Optical path difference. Optical path. Okay. So I can say that, right, if I'm having multiple slabs, right, or multiple mediums, each having thickness T1, T2, T3, and each having refractive index mu1, mu2, mu3. So the actual vertical, sorry, virtual depth will be the sum of all, right? Yes, we can just extend the concepts, but don't worry. This is just for your extra knowledge. Okay. Right? Got it, everyone? Tell me, got it? Okay, let's try to solve one problem. Let's try to solve one problem based on this. Let's see how many of you understood the concept. Think about it. Everyone, please think about it. Okay. Ignore my Alexa. Very good, Disha. Very good, Dhruv. Abhilash, you are getting Abhishek, Akhilesh, Zaiba, Laksh. <coughs> Laksh, you are getting all the classes. You are understanding everything. Very good, Ananya. Let's see. Ananya, you made a small mistake, okay? Check once again. Piyush, Pranya. Snigdo, you also made one small mistake. Pravilika. Okay, I'll help you guys. I'll help you guys in this problem. Okay, now let's think about it. Let's think about it. Okay. Let's think about it. Yes, Kushagra, correct. Okay. Now, when a glass slab is placed on a on a dot on a paper, it appears displaced by four centimeters. See, it is not the apparent height. It is displacement given. Yes or no? Tell me. Think about it. It is delta R. Yes, Abhilash. Very good. Correct. Right? That is the concept. It is the displacement. And we know that displacement is this. Right, displacement is real height, right? Real depth minus apparent depth. Got it? Yes, got it. So the answer is 12. I hope everyone understood the concept now. Tell me, everyone got the concept? Yes, very good, Pragna. Pravarika, Laksh, you're getting? Mohit, Zayan, Renuka. Okay, very good. Very good. Very good, Pravlika. Okay, so I hope all of you understood the application. See, this is very easy if you understand the basic concept. Okay. Now, this is what I have already told you. This is what I have already told you to find D. Okay. Right? And I told you how to calculate it. Okay? 
So even if you don't know this for your class, it's fine. But you can easily find this D using trigonometry. Okay. So this is the formula. This is the formula of lateral shift. This is the formula of lateral shift, which you can get using trigonometry. This is done. So as I said, first calculate D in terms of OB, OB, right? Find OB, then D when you get OB, yes or no? So this is the derivation. Okay, this is the derivation. I hope all of you understood how to derive this. Guys, do I need to tell once again, tell me anyone who didn't get this? How to derive this? Because this is of trigonometry, not of physics, of maths. Okay, we will have two different right angle triangle. Okay, I'll explain once again. Okay, don't worry, I'll explain once again. Okay, but you have to do it, right? You have to do it. Now let's see this. I'll explain once again. Let's see this. Now, I'll draw this line. Okay. And I'll say that this point is, okay, this point, this point is, this point is N. Suppose this point is N, O-N. And this is O-B. This is O-B. Now, can you say that? Can you say that O-N is equal to T given? O-N is equal to T given. Okay, and this angle is R, this angle is R, R. So what is OB? Tell me, what is OB? Can I say that? Can I say that? If this angle is R, then OB is hypotenuse, right? OB is hypotenuse. This OB is hypotenuse and ON is your base. So ON by OB, ON by OB is equal to cos R, yes, or cos R1, anyone have any issue? Or OB is equal to ON, which is T by cos R1? Yes or no? Tell me in this triangle, O and B. In O and B, this triangle, right? Now, in triangle IBL, sorry, OBL. In triangle OBL, OBL, OBL. Okay, we know. We know that this angle is what? Tell me, what is this angle? Think about it. According to, according to vertically opposite angle, this whole angle is I, but this angle is R. So this angle, angle BOD, okay, I'll just draw it like this. Okay, this angle is actually I minus R. Yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? Very good, Pragna. Very good, right? This is I minus R, no? Because total is I and this is R. So this is I minus R, right? Okay. And this is 90 degree. And this is OB. So I want to find BL. Tell me, BL. So can I say that? Can I say that? Okay. BL by OB is equal to sine I minus I, sine I minus R, yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? And BL is your lateral displacement, BL is D. So D is equal to OB sine I minus R. Now think about it, now think about it, right? Was it difficult? Tell me, was it difficult? If you just think about from math's point of view, was it difficult? If yes, right? It might be difficult, right? But if yes, then think what was difficult in that, right? And try to work on that, try to understand that concept. Okay. Now, OB we calculated, we'll just put it. That's what we did in the formula. Yes, right? See, that's what we did now. We calculated OB, we calculated D. Then we just substituted it. We got the formula. Okay. Right, everyone? Yes, very good. So try to solve this one. Try to solve this problem. Try to solve this problem. Everyone try to solve this.
step by step don't worry step by step try to understand write down all the data okay then proceed okay so i can say that a ray of light refracted through glass slab of thickness t is given and refractive index mu is given if the angle of incidence is 60 degree then find the lateral shift okay now how to solve okay i'll help you guys for this i'll help you what is given first of all you have to write thickness is given 2 root 3 mu is given mu of what glass slab okay root 3 and angle of incidence which is i is equal to 60 degree now the question is angle r is not given right r is not given so if r is not given how to find d so r you can calculate now yes or no r you can calculate make sense using snell's law yes or no so r you can calculate using snell's law now if you can calculate r then it is formula putting getting got it tell me guys got it so first thing r is not given so we have to calculate r how we can calculate r using snell's law okay right and after using snell's law yes very good 2 cm very good pragna very good so everyone please go through it once okay now sometimes people get confused in this formula so always remember this which i told you mu1 sin i is equal to mu2 sin r right try to use this where mu1 is the refractive index of incident side and mu2 is refractive index of tell me refracted side okay always remember this because sometimes students get confused in this what is this refractive index okay so it's better to use this now mu1 mu1 is what air right so 1 Sin i is equal to mu two. What is mu two? Root three. Sin r, and it is given that i is equal to sixty degree. So it is given, right? So we can calculate r thirty degree. Okay, then formula putting getting. Okay, very good, everyone. one more problem one more problem sorry i'll re so i'll re shown you the answer but i guess all of you can solve this right okay i guess all of you already solve this all all of you can solve this yes or no tell me yes or no okay now answer me this answer me this real depth is greater than apparent depth always true or false real depth is always or real tell me real depth is always greater than apparent depth true or false always always yes very good morya very good dhru very good pragna it is false it is not true can anyone tell me why it is false pragna dhru morya can you tell me why it is false because it depends on medium na it depends on medium right yes or no tell me yes or no suppose the object is in rarer medium the object is in rarer medium and observer is in denser medium observer is in denser medium right yes very good pragna if because when we saw when we saw the last concept about apparent height and real height the object was in denser medium 
and observer was in rarer medium. Yes or no? Yes, right? See, angle, according to angle, okay, height will change. According to angle, height will change. Okay, but it won't be more or less as compared to real height. Okay, and see, I told you, I told you, it is what? It is real by apparent, always. It is equal to mu. This mu is mu relative. Got it? This mu is mu relative. Got it, everyone? Tell me, got it? Yes? Okay, very good. Now, this is refractive index through multiple refractive medium. We already, yes, very good. We already discussed this one. That doesn't matter how many medium you keep in between. Everything will get canceled, right? We will just worry about first medium and last medium. Yes or no? Tell me. Yes or no? Yes, very good, everyone. Right, very good. So let's solve one problem. Let's solve one simple problem. Try to solve this problem. Try to solve this problem. Devanand, you are getting everything, Devanand? Yes, very good, Maura. Very good, Pagna. Very good, Maura Vardhan. Very good. Snigdo, correct. Very good. Easy, na? Easy? This is easy? Yes, the answer is 9 by 8. No, the answer is 9 by 8. Logically, you can think. Okay. So, refractive index of glass with respect to air. Mu glass by mu air is given as 3 by 2. And refractive index of water with respect to air. Mu water Okay, mu water divided by mu air is equal to 4 by 3. So what is mu glass with respect to mu water? Right? So just divide it. Just divide it. 3 by 2 divided by 4 by 3. Okay? Got it? Yes, very good. Next, try this one. Try this one, guys. Try this one. Yes. Very good, Maurya. Very good, Pragna. Kushagri, think about it. See, refractive index of air with respect to glass. Refractive index of air with respect to refractive index of glass is given as three, 2 by 3. 
refractive index of diamond with respect to refractive index of diamond with respect to refractive index of air air is equal to what 12 by 5 12 by 5 what is the refractive index refractive index of glass with respect to diamond okay Now think about it. We know that refractive index of glass glass should be in numerator, right? Glass should be in numerator, and this should be in denominator, right? Yes, yes. So can I write it like this? Mu g by mu a, mu g by mu a into mu a by mu d. Yes or no? Tell me. Yes or no? Mu g by mu d is equal to mu g by mu a into mu a by mu d. Yes. What is mu g by mu a? Tell me. Mu a by mu g is two by three. So mu g by mu a is three by two. Three by two into mu a by mu d will be five by twelve. Five by twelve. Right. So Kushagra, your answer is correct. Four times. So it is five by eight. Five by eight. Okay. Five by eight. Now, logically, you can think. You have to find. You have to find refracting this of glass with respect to diamond. Think about it. Then it is relative. Relative refracting index will be greater than one or less than one. Tell me. It should be greater. Less than one or less than one. Less than one, na? Right? Less than one. Yes, very good. So obviously, if your answer is greater than one, then that is wrong. Without even checking, you can say it is wrong, right? Because it is refractive index of rare medium divided by sorry, sorry. Sorry, rare medium divided by denser medium. Rare medium divided by denser medium. Okay. Okay. Got it, everyone. Tell me, got it. Okay. Now, in refract. Yes. So, what is the next concept in refractive index? Tell me. What is the next concept? Tell me. What do you think? What is the next concept that you have studied? Anyone? Next concept. That is a very important concept. Very important concept. You guys haven't studied spherical lens. You have studied now spherical lenses. that is also one of the application of refraction only right everyone right yes very good so the next concept is okay next concept is refraction by spherical lens now when you talk about lens okay what what is the difference between spherical mirror and lens tell me what is the difference between spherical mirror and lens tell me tell me everyone now when you talk about yes when you talk about spherical mirrors okay so spherical mirror can be carved out of either hollow yes hollow spherical glass or solid spherical glass but one side should be polished right one side should be polished but when we talk about lens lens is carved right out of solid sphere and none of its side is polished got it now when we talk about lens when we talk about lens lens is a piece of glass but it is of two types it is of two types generally two type but there are actually multiple type of lenses okay instead of these two there are multiple type of lenses there is something called parabolic lens also 
parabolic lens. Okay, but our syllabus is set with convex and concave. Okay, convex and concave. Now, in convex as well as concave, there are multiple type of lenses. Multiple type of lenses. When you talk about convex, think about it. I hope all of you know what is convex and concave now. Concave, where there is cave kind of structure, right? Comes, right? In cave like of structure. This is what I remember. Okay, right? Got it. So that is your concave. Okay, convex is bulged out, right? Now, if you see this, this, and this, I can say that I can say that in this case, in this case, both are convex. Both surfaces are convex. That's why it is called as double convex or just convex. Now, in this case, one is plane and second is convex. So it is called as plano convex. But if you see this, so this is again cave-like structure, right? So Concave. This surface is concave, whereas this surface, the other surface is convex. So this is called as concave or convex. Got it? Tell me. Got it? I hope all of you understood the nomenclature now. Now, in the same case, right? When you talk about this, okay. When you talk about this, so I can. Guys, can you hear me? Am I audible? Because I got a call. That's why my voice. Yes, it is not low, right? It is not low. Okay, very good, very good. So when you see this, right? In this, it is double concave or just concave. In this, it is plano concave, and this is so. This is something like this, right? Imagine something like this. So this is your convex or concave, right? This is the nomenclature. Okay. Now you don't have to worry about all. You just have to study this one, and this one, and this one. Pure convex and pure concave. Got it? Tell me, got it? Right. Now let's try to understand. Okay. Let's try to understand how this lens work. Okay. How this lens lens work? Now, so we. Have some assumptions, okay? We have some assumptions. Now, first of all, when you talk about the terms, so as I said, as I said, the lens is made up of what? Tell me, spherical glass, yes or no? Yes or no? Right? So if it is made up of spherical glass, so it is an aperture. It is aperture from big glass sphere, okay? So the terms that we used in Mirror is also used over here, which is radius of curvature, focus, principal focus, right? Principal axis and all those things. But when you talk about mirror, okay, when you talk about mirror, so mirror had only one surface, yes or no? Mirror had only one surface, makes sense. But when you talk about lens, lens have two surfaces, yes or no? Lens have two surfaces, right? Right. So, what do you think about center of curvature or focus? Will it have only one center of curvature, one focus, or two center of curvature or two focus? Tell me. Think about it. Think about it, everyone. Suppose this is your lens. Suppose this is your lens. This is your lens. This yellow one is your lens. Okay, right. This yellow one is your lens. Is it made up of one sphere or two sphere? Tell me. One sphere, two sphere. Think about it. Two, both will have different center. Now, tell me, both will have different center? Yes or no? Try to understand this very simple concept. For this red one, for this red surface, this is the center of curvature for the red surface, and for green surface, 
This will be a center of curvature, yes or no? Yes or no? And the line joining both, the line joining them, the line joining them will be your principal axis. Makes sense, right? Now tell me, now tell me. Can I say that? Can I say that? Okay, we will have two center of curvature. It means we will have two focus also. We will have two focus also. Yes, got it. Okay, now what about the middle point of this? What about the middle point of this? Can I say that the middle point of this, okay, middle point of this is called your optical center. The middle point of the lens is called as optical center, right? So don't you think that optical center is same as pole? Think about it. Optical center is same as pole, right? Pole in the middle, yes. Very good, very good, everyone. Okay, very good. Okay. Now let's 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 think about the working of. Let's think about the working of your lens. Okay, so I hope all of you understood what is optical center, what is principal axis, what is focus, what is aperture. Okay, got it? Right? Now, when you talk about image formation, when you talk about image formation, so same line, whatever we studied in reflection, whatever we studied in reflection of curved surface, the same rays will be used. I hope all of you remember. The first was passing, right? Coming from infinity, passing through focus, then passing through focus, going to infinity. Okay, third, passing through optical center and going straight without deviation. Now think about it, think about it. Why this will bend? Okay, now if you think about this, can I say that, okay, there'll be refraction, yes or no? So the assumption that we make over here is the thickness of this lens is very small. Thickness is very small. Thickness, wait. Okay, thickness is very small. Thickness is less. So this is the assumption that we make, okay. Right, now. Just think about it, just think about it. I'm just talking about only one surface. I'm just talking about only, only one surface. Now light falls and the tangent of the surface is like this. The tangent of the surface is like this. Okay, this is the tangent and light is coming like this. Okay, so it is entering from, tell me, Rare medium to denser medium, rare medium to denser medium. So it will bend toward the normal. Yes or no? Tell me, bend toward the normal, right? So it seems like it will converge. It seems like it will converge. Got it? Yes or no? Right? Right? That is why, that is why convex lens is called as converging mirror. It's like converging lens. Okay, it is opposite. It is opposite. Okay. Right? In mirror, concave was your converging mirror, no? Right? In lens, convex lens is your converging lens and concave is your diverging. Okay? Got it? Tell me, got it? Got it, everyone? Anyone have any issue in this? Disha? Devanand? Very good. Pravilika, good. Akhilesh? So this is not coming, right? Sandhu, you're getting very good. Okay. Now, if I ask you, if I ask you, now our syllabus is very simple. Our syllabus, we don't have two different focus. We have just one focus. We have one focus means the same focus, okay? We won't be having two different focuses, okay? We have same length of the focus. The surface would be same. Okay. Now, can you draw the images? Tell me, can you draw the images? Think about it. Think about it. Because when you talk about drawing image, 
don't you think that this would be same as same as the one we did in mirror okay so we have these cases first case as infinity when the object is at infinity so we know that when object is at infinity then image will be on focus yes or no tell me yes or no this is what we have studied in mirror also right and what can we say what can we say about the nature of the image let's think about it is it real or virtual tell me is it real or virtual real or virtual real right it is formed by the actual intersection of rays right real inverted and diminished so magnification is very very less than one. it is very small very good now second is behind center of curvature next is behind center of curvature okay now you can actually you can actually apply the concept of reflection okay you can actually apply the concept that we studied in spherical mirror think about it forget about lens forget about lens okay right i'm just asking you a simple simple problem okay when when the image sorry when the object is behind the center of curvature in spherical mirror in concave mirror okay what was the nature of an object tell me what sorry what is the nature of image tell me nature of image real right then inverted yes between center of curvature and focus yes very good and inverted yes so same thing real inverted diminished okay right now this is some mistake okay it is between center of curvature and focus okay this is some mistake okay it is error printing error okay got it right next at center of curvature 2f at center of curvature so same as mirror if it is center of curvature then again it will be our second center of curvature only okay second center of curvature only and mark my word here right both f1 f2 the distance is same both are same surface okay so real inverted equal in size at second center of curvature now can you can you take the concept can you take the concept okay and find the analogy right if you see the nature of image of concave mirror it is same as the nature of image of convex lens yes or no tell me yes or no think about it yes or no right okay when it is between 2f and f when it is between 2f and f again beyond f enlarged okay at f at infinity between f and between f and pole again virtual virtual and erect now if you remember the concept of concave mirror if you remember the concept right of image made by concave mirror right and if you see this the nature of image formed is actually same yes or no tell me raise your hand everyone right yes or no if you observe the table of both reflection by concave mirror and this image formed by convex lens yes very good everyone very good preeti very good sindhu okay now depending on that can you say can you say something about can you say something about concave mirror concave lens tell me can you say something about concave lens okay so this is the type this is the size position and nature okay so i would request after the class please i'll upload the video take some time and write down these points okay write down these points okay now when you talk about think about convex mirror think about convex mirror what was the nature of image formed tell me there is only two type of image formed in convex mirror yes or no tell me yes or no in convex mirror there is only two type of image formed yes one at infinity and second 
which is diminished yes so don't you think don't you think that the concept will be same here so when we talk about convex sorry concave lens right concave lens in this also there is only two type of image formed two type of image formed okay got it right one at focus and second between focus and optical center and diminished and virtual yes virtual direct and diminished got it got it everyone tell me got it okay now what about sign convention don't you think the sign convention should be same as what we have discussed what we have learned in spherical mirrors tell me it will be same right it will be same okay it will be same very good everyone sign convention will be same okay now we have studied that when we have mirror okay when we had mirrors spherical mirror okay then i can find the relationship between image distance object distance and focus using mirror formula okay the same thing can be done for lens okay and this is a lens formula right now the only difference between mirror formula and lens formula is I, as you can see mirror formula was 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f but lens formula is 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f okay and whenever we put the value of v u and f we will put along with its sign right along with its sign okay right yes very good now these kind of question is asked okay you have to solve how you have to solve right problem based on these concepts now there's one more difference now when you talk about when you talk about magnification of mirror what was the formula tell me what was the formula think about it guys what was the formula minus v by u very good right hi by h not is equal to minus v by u but in case of lens it is just v by u okay in case of lens it is just v by u it is just v by u got it tell me got it yes it is just v by u that is one difference okay that is one difference so if you convert v in terms of f and u then these are the formulas okay right and when you talk about power there is one more term so when we talk about lens there is one more term which is power power of a lens we have we are very familiar with this term right because we see na power bad gaya my power become 3 my power become 2 1.5 is now yes is lockdown mein bahut log ka power badha hoga is size ka bada yahan chalu mera to bad gaya hai pragna ka bad gaya hai very okay mera to bad gaya hai mera to definitely bad gaya hai aap get it checked it has become 2 and 1.5 0.5 and 1 se theek hai so the power is yes so the power is defined as reciprocal of focal length in meter right reciprocal of focal length in meter and the unit is in diopter unit is in diopter okay the unit is diopter now when you talk about it think about it think about it hum log bolte plus or minus plus or minus now think about it when you talk about focus of convex lens talk about it talk about it this is this is your convex and this is your concave concave okay so if light is coming through this side okay so the focus that will consider will be this yes or no this will be the focus that will consider yes or no tell me yes or no right but if light is yes in this case okay in this case right it will be like this so we will consider this as a focus this as a focus now tell me if this is f this is f this is f1 this is f2 tell me which of them will be positive which of them will be negative 
Think about it. Obviously, convex one will be positive and concave will be negative. Very good, Renuka. Right. So that's why power. When you talk about power, positive power, negative power, है ना? So positive power is due to convex lens and negative power is due to concave lens. Okay. Got it? Right. Okay. So we will solve one problem based on this one problem. Then we'll end the class. Okay. Right. One problem. Try to solve this, guys. Try to solve this. Very good, Maria. We will check. Everyone, please try to solve step by step, step by step. Okay, Kushagri. Start with writing the data. Start with writing the data. The image of needle placed forty-five centimeter from the lens. Now, image distance is always negative. That is one thing that we should remember. So, U is always negative minus forty-five. Formed on the screen, place ninety centimeter on other side of the lens. Okay. So, image is formed ninety centimeter. On the other side, find the displacement of the image if the object is moved by five centimeter away from the lens. Now, think about it. Think about it. First of all, you have to find the focus. Yes or no? Tell me. First of all, you have to find the focus because you have image distance, object distance. You have to find the focus. Yes. Tell me. Yes. Because find the displacement. The object is moved five centimeter away from the lens. So. This is u one, u one, and this is v one. U two is given as minus fifty. U two is given as minus fifty, and you are asked to find v two. Okay, right. So first you have to find focus. Very good. Yes, Renuka. Very good. So focus is thirty centimeter. Focus is thirty centimeter. Yes or no? Using this concept, using this formula, focus is thirty centimeter. Right? Right, everyone. Okay. Now, after finding the focus, okay, you have to find v, which is seventy-five centimeter. Now, tell me. Initially, initially, the image was at ninety centimeter. Now it is seventy-five centimeter. Then, what do you think? What do you think? How much it is moved? Fifteen centimeter. Yes or no? And power of lens is one by f, which is yes. Very good. So I hope all of you understood this concept. Tell me, all of you understood this concept? Yes. We will have one more class on light. Okay, so we will complete light in this month. Okay, right? Priyanshu, this is not a book. I, this is um, this is a notes. I'll send you this. Okay, don't worry. After completion, I'll just upload this. Okay, don't worry. I'll upload this on the Google Classroom itself. Okay.